I'm gonna wire up my RV battery bank. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see the desulfator here. The clean desulfator is working on the better golf cart batteries. Now these were the ones that were de that were uh, somewhat sulfated from the store. These were my replacement batteries for two that were shorted. These are my original old batteries from the RV that went bad on me in the winter, in the onset of winter, these other four. These two are relatively new, but they're dated October 2014, and I got them, I don't remember when I got them. The, uh, what was the dates on here? Should be a date. Um, October 14. I got them, uh, wait, was it November? No, they were tested in November. Well, anyway, these were not really working well, out well for me. I don't know why. I could not get them to take a charge for anything. So I've had them on the Harbor Freight solar panel system with the Harbor Freight solar charger. Now, this is not really a good charger, but it works for now. It's quick plug-in and, and play. Um, you just pop in the wires and go. Looking at 14.3 and rising volts in the sun right now, 14.4, but it's really going up. 14.5, that's interesting, the battery, the power is going way, way up as I watch. Of course it could be the, the uh, yeah, oh isn't it interesting, the desulfator. Oh, I thought maybe the desulfator was affecting it, no it's just sun clouds. I don't see the difference in sunlight out there, but it's varying. 13 and a half volts. So anyway, this has been sitting here for a couple weeks now, and enough time where I feel that the desulfator has been doing its job, and now I can start to work on hooking up these batteries and using the Bedini motor hooked up to these batteries to help start restoring these. So I've got the desulfator permanently going to sit on the better batteries. These are going to sit here for the rest of winter until I start using the RV again in warmer weather. It, so they'll have a while to just sit here happily and become restored with time. Now these guys will then be on the Bedini. So the permanent, the, real, the professional desulfator on these and the Bedini motor on these. So enough talk. Let's get some action going here. What I need to do is connect positive to positive of the battery pairs because I'm going to set up 12 volt battery banks using these old golf cart batteries. Positive to positive, sorry I'm saying positive to negative. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to put, yeah, I'm going to connect these as 12 volts. Let me re, uh, let me put these guys in between. Do I have another? I have two, yes I do. Uh, plus to minus, these are 6 volt batteries, so I'm going to hook them up. Plus to minus, boy, seeing my breath steaming out as I talk reminds me of my first days in the camper. Boy, those were some days. I don't miss it. Nope, I do not miss it. Not for a minute. But I wouldn't. I, I uh, wouldn't trade it for anything. It gave me some. Uh, it toughened me up. It gave me some experience. So plus to minus. Now I have a 12 volt battery here. Okay, so this is one 12 volt battery. with batteries you got to be careful you don't short anything out there's a whole lot of potential power here Let me check the camera make sure I'm still recording and looking good yes happy <clears throat> positive to negative plus to minus over in this one So this is, uh, I'm recording this live, if I cut anything out or edit anything out, it'll be due to a cough, if anything. I have been coughing recently, still actually since I came back from Canada. Otherwise this will be live, so you'll see exactly what I do as I do it. 
nothing taken out. You see how really quickly it is to hot pop in a battery bank and hook it up. I might pause when I'm hooking up the uh, or finding a place for the bedini. I've got to think about that. But we'll see that in a minute when I get there. My only problem is the camera is a little bit in my way now. Okay, now what I want to do, I now have two 12 volt battery makes. So I've got uh, plus and minus, and here I've got plus and minus. Now I want to connect plus to plus and minus to minus. So then I have uh, basically what I'll have here now then is the, there'll be a this is a 12 volt battery. This is a 12 volt battery. I'm going to connect them in parallel the two 12 volt batteries so that I have one battery bank. Now, this is the scary part working with wires. I don't want anything to short to anything as I go. Gotta be careful. I hope I'm not blocking the view, not too badly. So this is the battery bank, Let's see, plus to plus, all right. Don't want to have any boom. This is the battery bank, or the battery bench that I built for my RV back in the day. It served me well. This was my bench, why I had spent long, many, many hours on this bench, sitting on top of my batteries. Now, we hook up the negatives across, negative to negative, and I'll have one big 12 volt battery bank. One battery bank. I will have to pause for a minute because I have to go get my voltmeter. I did not bring it out with me. And I don't want to bore you while waiting for me to go out to the tiny house on wheels and go grab it. Ah, I'm sure I'm blocking you here, I'm sorry. Okay, no boom. No boom is good. It means I didn't hook the wires up wrong. I don't know, I'm always very nervous working with batteries. There's a lot of potential for explosion Explosion when you're dealing with so much power. Okay, now, those are all hooked up. My voltmeter is in the tiny house, so what I want to do first is measure the volts. Well, I guess, you know what, I can skip that. Right now, what I can do is hook up a, the Bedini motor. Uh, I want to put a board there and put it here. Um, let me see if it'll sit here. I've got the Bedini motor right here. I just don't want to cover. Let me see here. My leads. I have plus and minus. That's going to be underneath there. So, clam's got to be tucked out of the way. Get the wire's tucked out of my way. Bring this over to here. Okay. Then I'll have access. The output will go on here. Actually, if I do it properly, I'll do minus here and plus here. That'll work. I'll do minus on one side and plus on the other. Now I have to see if my my leads are going to be long enough. Sorry, I'm, I'm working this out. Like I said, I'm doing this live to show you. It's not that complicated. Now if I can find the leads. Maybe I can't. Okay, I've got two more clip-on leads. I might have to go and get my voltmeter and those other two leads. Alright then. Alright, 
I'm missing two of my leads for the Beanie motor. I've got these two. These are actually from a power inverter. And what they're going to do is come from the battery, the power input, to the Bedini. And then from the Bedini motor, I'll go on the output to the battery banks. Alright, I have to go in and get my voltmeter and my two missing leads. And we'll be back. I am back. I have my leads. I set up my weight. I have my meter. So. Oh, unfortunately it's also stiff from the cold. I hate when that happens. So, plus power in is on the top. I always have to try to remember which is which. And I haven't used this for a while. I made this Spadini motor eight years ago when I first came back to the US. <sighs> Plus, onto the powering battery banks positive lead. Now, let me see the Bedini. The uh, battery charger's in the way a little bit there. Alright, there's plus on there. Uh, okay, I don't want that to get in the way of there. The wires are so stiff. with cold cold wires make sure I am recording sorry I'm blocking the camera uh, okay good you can see what I'm doing minus to the minus the main minus negative lead of the entire setup oh. There we go, that's on there now. And that's on there. Okay, plus and minus is on there. Now, we have to connect the positive and negative. Let's do the negative right here. Now, to properly hook up, something actually I learned from YouTubers, from my viewers, I want to thank you all. To properly hook up a battery bank. Oh, that's why I never used that one. That's not stupid. I will be back. Ah, that was the better leads. <laughs> anyway, let me finish explaining what I was going to say. To properly hook up a battery bank, when you've got a bank like this of mixed sizes batteries, so two sixes and two more sixes, to make sure it's charged proportionally and the power goes through all the batteries, you hook up to the negative on the outside of the farthest outer battery of the bank and the positive on the far opposite battery of the battery bank. Instead of going plus and minus on one pair or plus and minus on the other pair, you go across the entire set of batteries. So plus and minus on the outer ends. And that way your, your power is being distributed throughout all evenly. Alright, let me go and get a uh, uh, set of clips that fits this. Okay, I'm back. I've got the leads that I needed. I don't like using these because they're old and ugly, but now I remember why they fit. So that's to the negative. The farthest out, negative. And this will be on the positive on the far opposite end of the other battery pack pair. Okay. 
Okay, this goes here. Oh, stiff coming up. Now, the Benini motor's hooked up. Now, before I do anything, I want to. Oh boy, that got stiff fast. Wow, it got stiff fast. My wires are going to break. I want to check the voltage. I hope this doesn't uh, get broken on me. The wires are stiffened on me. That's fast. I'm going to check the voltage. I don't know if you can see this. But I'm going to read it out to you. The voltage of this battery bank pair, 12.23 volts. That's all these ever were, 12.24 volts. That's all these batteries ever had, if I remember right. So, we get the Bedini motor a spin up. Hope I've got a short in here somewhere. I hope it still works after all these years. Um, resistance, boy, everything's stiff. Ah, good. See, we got light. See the little green and wheat ball? Can you see it from your angle? Yeah, I think you can. <coughs> got light glowing here so that means this is on and running not very fast That's it. Well, I'm just going to let that run for a while. Days, weeks, months, and we'll come out here and occasionally check the voltage. And the battery should start rising in voltage. In the meantime, I've got to fix my voltmeter because the uh, leads are going to break off. And there we have it. A little side note. The Bedini motor is a radiant energy device, so it takes energy, radiant energy, and dumps it into your batteries. It doesn't like my camera either. It's a very sensitive device, to be honest. I had to take off the desulfator because it didn't like it. And I don't know if you saw the blinking light a bit ago. The little uh, green and wheat light bulb was blinking before to the pulse of the Clendy sulfator. So it's a very sensitive device. It is uh, in tune with the, uh, the environment around you. And cell phones, your own body, um, different things around it can affect it. Electronics and stuff, uh, anything magnetic, metallic. It's really a sensitive device, but once you get it running, it's quite a, an amazing device. And it can really desulfate lead acid batteries beautifully. So that's why I've brought this out here. Let this sit here and desulfate these old golf cart batteries slowly and gently. And uh, because what, what happens is, see the Clen desulfator actually uses energy. It's a electric desulfator it uses energy so you know this it's going to take me time to get this going I'll probably have to take the camera away from here to get it running happily it's really being um, sensitive on me today you can see the light going out and the wheel is slowing down once I get it adjusted this one here because it's so old it's becoming sensitive and uh, and uh, gives me some trouble as it's getting it got its quirks now and then. One day I'll have to just rebuild the entire thing. But anyway, the Bedini motor will desulfate lead acid batteries without, instead of putting a drain on him like a over the counter desulfator like the Clen, the Clen will use power from the battery that it's actually desulfating. Whereas the Bedini motor will use power from a different battery just to keep the wheel spinning. And the miracle is what happens here in the coil. 
in the coil, the radiant energy follows the collapsing field from the magnet passing it, and the, um, what's called radiant energy, or back EMF, flows in into the batteries to be charged. So there's no direct connection between the batteries running the device and the batteries being charged. There's no direct connection at all. So, I'll let this run for a while.